reinventing the tattoo community where tattoo artists, apprentices, and collectors are joining live events, sharing their tattoos and art, as well as creating art together across the globe. If you haven't already, you can find the mobile app on the Apple App Store and Google Play. Today, we are lucky enough to have Brandon Bean of Dark Skin Body Art here with us. Guy Aitchison and Brandon will be talking art history, diving into modern Black artists, as well as traditional African art. Very exciting. If you can check out the Reinventing Mobile app, you can also find a plethora of awesome events going on. Coming up this week alone, the Tattoo Collecting podcast with Fawn Baker and Jordan Rookus will be doing their 25th episode. They interview epic collectors about their collections and their journeys, and it's always a fun time. Our regular Reinventing the Drawing groups uh, are, are always on Sunday at 1 p.m. Uh, this is uh, The time zones are all in Eastern, in case uh, there's any confusion. Um, Sunday at 1 p.m. with Jason Leeser, and Monday at 9 a.m. with Jake Meeks, where you can zoom in with artists to chat, give and receive feedback, and prepare for your upcoming pieces. Every Monday, Guy and the members who subscribe to the Reinventing curriculum get together at 9 p.m. to hone our art skills for the Monday exercises. It's been super wonderful to see everyone's growth in their skills and their confidence. And if you haven't checked these out yet or aren't subscribed, you can even get a couple free sample lessons at reinventingthetattoo.com. There are lots more, so make sure to uh, check out the events page. And I wanna say thank you to our sponsors. Um, as well, because they make it possible for us to do this for free. Um, Inkjet Stencils, one of our sponsors, will actually be having a demo tomorrow at 12 p.m., where they will be going over techniques um, to make your stencils more effective, as well as how you can get your own free samples of their stencils before you decide to purchase their rad machines. Though if you do a lot of art, large scale work, they are now selling stencil printers that can print out literally an entire back piece. It's pretty epic. Our newest sponsor is Jesse Smith's shop, Loose Screw Tattoo. They are actually looking for a resident artist right now, and it's pretty incredible opportunity as they have all the supplies covered, health, dental, paid vacation, and a 401k option. It's pretty much the dream. And if you mention that you heard about it from us, then he will know that you're interested in learning and growing. All right, so I am going to disappear into the background now, and I'll be here to read off your comments and questions. And remember to subscribe to the YouTube and download the app. Right on. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, this is our third art history talk. Uh, first one with Travis Louie and second one with Gunnar. We're really uh, great talks and you know, got to see some artists that maybe a lot of you as tattooers haven't been exposed to. Um, and it's been, you know, enlightening for me, too, even though I've been to a lot of art museums and grew up reading art books. But one thing I definitely noticed in these first two interviews was uh, in the mainstream art history texts and museums. It's coming from a very European centric uh, standpoint. And uh, here we are in Black History Month. And so I'm excited to have Brandon being here from Dark Skin Body Art and uh, love to hear about some uh, influential and important black artists and a little bit more about African art history and whatever else that Brandon might uh, have to share with us. Thanks for coming, Brandon. Thanks for having me guys. Great to be back on here. And for anyone not familiar with Dark Skin Body Art, I've been following it for a few years and it's uh, you know, really some fantastic art and it really uh, uh, kind of, you know, if you want to see how certain colors are going to work on certain skin tones, that's the place to do it. He also posts a lot of healed photos. Um, Brandon himself is a very solid tattooer, and uh, you've been tattooing how many years? Uh, it's about 11 now, going on 11 years now. Right on. you got a set of Procreate tools, all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, yeah. Thanks for joining, Brandon. Uh, I would love to hear a little bit about uh, when you were young and you first were exposed to art, uh, who it was, who, who it was that you connected with, and what you first, you know, what, what made you an art fan? Okay. Um, yeah, back ever since I was a kid, I was born in 78. Uh, so I grew up with uh, parents who, of course, bought uh, vinyl records at the time. So my parents were very big into like uh, Stax, Motown, uh, those type of guys. But my parents also were big into uh, rock and, and funk. A lot of the album art from back then, from the old 70s albums, is still to this day, as far as I'm concerned, some of the 
best eye candy you'll see in your life. And I seen those growing up. I remember, you know, the uh, Maggot Brain uh, album from Parliament with the guy buried up to the sand with the dirt, you know, and his head was just sticking out the ground. And then those album covers from Parliament, like of the mothership, you know, and Sir Nose Devoid of Funk, like that stuff just really captured my eye. Earth, Wind and Fire album covers, you know, and the the symbols and everything that I now that I'm older, I really understand more so what I was looking at. But back then that stuff really just looked cool to me, you know, like really, really, really cool to me. Uh, Ernie Barnes or the Sugar Shack that Ernie Barnes did, you know, from the Good Times uh, logo. I, I just always thought that stuff was cool. And those were the images that like were burned in my brain when I was like really young. As I got older, I remember actually looking at the Guns N' Roses album cover for Appetite Destruction and that Robert Williams uh, pullout that was in there. You know, the monster came through and the chick had like the paintings around her, her ankles and everything. You know, that was, I love that. Megadeth and uh, I think it's what Evil Ernie, the guy is, all those images, you know, were just stuck in my head. I thought that was cool and I wanted to do that. And that was pretty much what started it for me. You know, the comic strips and all that came like a little later, but you know, for them it was, for me it was the music and those, those that album art. Have you actually ever had a chance to do a, a, uh, any album cover art? I never have. It's one, no. it's on my bucket list. That's <laughs> definitely one of the things that's on my bucket list. Well, anyone listening who's uh, looking for an album cover artist, check this guy's stuff out. Really uh, uh, dynamic. Uh, he's great with anatomy and characters. Uh, yeah, right on. Yeah, I got to do album covers. That was that was my pre-tattooing career. I did about 40 of them. Um, oh, man. See, that's... <laughs> I want to do one so bad. Them and skateboards. Like, you know, that was... You know, I want to do a deck so bad. You know, you know for somebody just... Those oh, your really style was perfect for it also. Very, very impacting. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's uh, where I based a lot of it from, you know, seeing those graphics and everything, you know, it was like that one shot, you know, it was just those pictures were just, just impactful. They were raw, you know, a lot of them were uh, very crude, you know, I thought it were funny. It's just, that was, it just spoke to me, you know, that's what jumped out at me. Do you remember specific artist names from some of this early album cover art? Only one I know for sure was uh, Ernie Barnes and his Sugar Shack. Uh, that's like the most famous ones. Uh, other than that, like Bitches Brew, Miles Davis album cover is like one of my favorite album covers ever. I don't know who did the art. Uh, Michael Jackson's Dangerous album cover, actually. The Collage, have you ever looked at that album and seen all the little hidden images and messages that's in there. It's like insane. I don't know how they did that back in the 80s. That guy was on something serious, you know, but yeah, there's the Sugar Shack right there by Ernie Barnes. You know, uh, I don't know. Who uh, you know <clears throat> that does actually, uh, you know, come straight from a very important period of, of uh, early 20th century uh, American art there. I definitely recognize that from Art museums. Yeah, yeah. like around out. the big deal when, uh, I can't remember the guy, the name slips me uh, at the moment. Those guys around that era, right? Yeah, I love it. This is, this was, <laughs> I thought oh, that right. was so cool. It just sucks cool. you in, you know? It's uh, uh, something that you can get lost in every corner of it. And uh, some mm -hmm. of my favorite album cover art was, was sort of like that, you know, I was a metalhead when I was a teenager and so, you know, like the Iron Maiden album covers always Those had. Those covers were tough, man. <laughs> right, right. You could get lost for hours in them. And, and so when I started painting album covers, that's what I wanted to do is I figured for at least the first side of the record, I wanted people to get lost in the, the cover because it was such a, an important experience for me as a, as a music fan. Right, right. That was, I'd buy your stuff. If like a lot of times if I liked it enough, I'd actually buy it just for the art. You know, it was, I geeked out over it that much. Over it that much. Yeah. You know, I would buy well, that stuff. It was a different era, you know, you'd go to, to a record store and it really was the job of the artist to reach out to people there. And, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, it was a shot in the dark for, for the, the musicians and for their record labels. Like, you know, we got to find a, somebody that's going to represent this. 
Right. And, uh, yeah, I definitely had, you know, some covers sent back for changes. They're like, you know, this is a little bit wrong. And, we, you know, uh, this is too funny. You got to tone that down. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, as long as you're hiding stuff, here's some things to hide. You know, they love that. I would, you know, I, oh, after yeah. a while, I would, I would reach out to the bands and say, hey, you want to hide some secret, you know, I guess these days they call it Easter eggs. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's the, I knew, yeah, I knew guys were doing that stuff on purpose. Like, I picked up more so up on the hidden stuff uh, in the 90s, as, you know, as I got older. You know, in the 80s, you know, so I was a little kid then, but in the 90s, I kind of was looking like, wait a minute, you know, like, ah, you know, you just, I was able to start picking it up. I just, I always thought that was so dope how people will talk to you through the art, you know, and hide little things there, that character and that it's like it's a soul and stuff, you know, like it, it really, it really builds the whole thing up. It makes the whole thing an experience besides, uh, well, if the album's actually good, you know, it really makes the whole thing, you know, like a real experience for me, you know, like that's, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I just geek out like that, but I love that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to, to hear a little bit about, uh, Art history from from the standpoint of a black artist. Uh, okay. I'd love to hear what you have to share. Uh, I'm not sure where to begin because you know way more than I do. So, mm -hmm. I wanted to. Well, so for me, uh, I know a lot of my friends. Uh, like I said, we're um, you're from Carbondale, right? Well, that's we've been down here for about 25 years. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. But, See, yeah, I'm from originally Chicago. from uh, Decatur, Illinois. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've been down there my whole life. Um, a little people, a lot of people don't know. Um, it was actually very uh, like censored and oppressed down there, like image-wise, uh, growing up. Of course, we didn't know it as kids, you know, growing up. But you know, you look on the TV, you would see like the kids doing things like you know graffiti, for instance. Like uh, we didn't get to see that unless it was on TV. Uh, even to certain magazines. Um, where I grew up, a lot of us, we got lost in uh, the Source magazine. Like, we didn't get to see, uh, what's it, uh, Beach Street that everybody got to see, and uh, where the guys were getting up and doing the graffiti and stuff. Like, they would take those videos out of our video stores. So we would never get to see them. So we would get the Source magazine. And in the Source magazine, if you flip to the back of it, back in the day, uh, they would have where everybody would do their graffiti panels like all over the world. And that was one of our ways of seeing it. But there was a cartoon that was always in the back by an artist named Andre Leroy Davis. And it was called The Last Word. And he would do funny little character drawings of like of the rappers and everything. And I mean, he was on point, like he never missed. He'd cartoon them and everything. But man, it was like, it'd be funny and the pictures would just be on point. You know, he would make Slick Rick look like underdog or something, you know, or uh, Run DMC would have their Adidas on and they would be like, he's standing on the globe. It was, and he did it every issue. Like, you know, and we would flip to the back and that's what we would see. Um, so in a sense, yeah, there you go. You know, like he never missed, like every, issue of the source this was back there you know so <laughs> this is the stuff you know that i grew up looking at you know this was like my art these were my artists um i didn't know a lot about let's say like john michael basquiat like i knew who he was from like the videos i know he used to mess with madonna you know but i couldn't see that work you know i didn't get to see any of that. This is what we were growing up looking at. Then we would have a uh, lowrider magazine. This is how I got introduced into uh, like Mr. Cartoon because uh, he would airbrush the murals on the cars. So this is how a lot of us consumed our art, you know, where I'm from in central Illinois back in the day. We were, uh, that's what we were looking at. Then the rap mag, uh, the course, the rap albums. Uh, Mr. Cartoon, I didn't know, was the one doing the logos for Eazy E and Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he. I didn't know he did those uh, until later. There's another guy. Um, he does a. Uh, he does. This is it. 
he did the album cover for The Far Side, which is one of the dopest album covers also. It's like they're on a this crazy roller coaster ride. You know, it's like they're going into a mouth. Like, so all these urban, I guess they would call urban, and street images, this is how we were seeing them, you know, and ingesting them. Uh, you get a few rap videos where they would be illustrated and we would copy that. And we didn't have museums in central Illinois. So like, at least not where I'm at. When we had, they would have art shows, they would never show that type of work. And we actually grew a real heavy resentment towards like the fine arts. I remember at one point, if you did an awesome oil painting, I would legit walk by it. Cause like it didn't, at the time, you know, young kids, you know, it didn't resonate with us. It didn't, that didn't move me. It didn't speak to me. Uh, that wasn't on the bottom of Javante Turner's skateboard deck. Uh, so that wasn't dope. You know, that's not on Ice Cube, sh you know, shirt, you know. So that wasn't it to me. That's just, and it was a very narrow minded like view, but that's actually how we ended up shaping our style. And a lot of uh, young black kids from me just talking to them like later on, they were kind of on the same thing. You know, uh, you couldn't get to the galleries. You know, back then, I guess galleries were real expensive. Like even if they had them, I guess you had to be invited or it cost money to go see them. They were out of the way. So you click with, you resonated with what you've seen in your neighborhood, you know? Uh, so, you know, the graffiti, that was, that was like it, you know, the, uh, the murals, those were it. Those guys getting up, slapping, putting up the, uh, the wheat paste uh, things that like Shepard Ferry and those guys do, you know, or the band, you know, the, the bands that would come and, you know, used to play the little dive bars and everything. Like that was the stuff that I seen. That was like art to me. All that other stuff was, it was like, whatever. You know, like, I don't care about Caravaggio, you know, and like, who, who gives a hell? Who gives a damn about that? You know, it's, you, we yeah. just didn't it's, care. It's easy to see it as being a part of an institution. And it's that institution that is like, not not giving you the time of day. You know what I mean? Right. So why, why should you care, right? Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, there's this art that's connecting with you on a visceral level. It's part of your lifestyle. And, it, you know, especially as teenagers, you know, yeah. I think... I mean, I, I certainly couldn't have given it a crap either. Even though I grew up in a house that had art books, there was a period in my teenage years where it was just all about the, uh, you know, the bands I was into and, you know, mm -hmm. and any art I was doing, because I had an airbrush and I was starting to do album covers, it all had was was in that range. And it just didn't occur to me that I could, like, broaden my perspective by going beyond just, like, Giger, yeah. you know, who I considered to be as, as great as... Uh, uh, da Vinci and you know yeah. possibly possibly still feel that way you know but uh, it, it I don't know at what age I guess did you start to broaden out want to see a little bit more of the art world when I joined the Navy so that'd be uh, 18 years old it that yeah the Navy me um, going places and seeing uh, man when did I go to my first museum I want to say, ooh, <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed now. 20? 20 years old, I went to my first museum. It was like 20 years old, maybe even 21. And I well, went then to that's my when first already. museum. Yeah, and I was, I seen it, was like, oh, shit. I've been, man, I've been messing up. You know, it was, because I really had that mentality hard, you know, and yeah, it was in my first deployment. So yeah, 21 years old. And I was in uh, Spain. I was in Spain and I see my first real like statue that was like looked like something that would have been in my social studies book. And yeah, it floored me. It it caught me. Like I wasn't even, I just was just walking down the street and you know, you turn a corner and the stuff is just there. And I looked at it, was like, whoa, like wait a minute. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, wait, this is. Like, yeah, then I noticed on the doorknobs and you look up, you know, you see like the way the buildings are designed, like that art is literally like everywhere. It's just all over the place over there. You know, like it's, you know, like, oh, hey, here's a, another carving, you know, some of a half naked guy, you know, that's literally, you know, it was, it was just so ill to me, like seeing it in person. And yeah, that was, 
that's when I was like, okay, I need to start paying attention to this stuff. You know, it was, it was, and it took me to go, it took that for it to, oh, you know, to open my eye up to it, you know, because other than that, I wasn't paying any attention. Yeah. Well, it wasn't in front of you. Yeah. It wasn't in front of you. Yeah, but when I seen it, I definitely recognized it like, oh, okay. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> tuning in now, you know, and yeah, ever since then, I've been opening up to it. Some of it, though, I ain't gonna lie, what, 42? I'm not gonna lie, guy. I'm still not sold on all that abstract stuff. I can't... <laughs> I'm still not biting on all of them. Some of it's cool, but a lot of that, I'm still... Uh, I don't know. I don't... I, I guess it just doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, it's kind of funny, because uh, I remember walking through the St. Louis Art Museum, and it's very much laid out uh, chronologically, right? And you can kind of see you starting way back in the Middle Ages and they're really struggling to get the human figure right. And perspective is all wonky and everyone looks like they've got the plague, you know, weird skinny <laughs> limbs and bloated bellies and, and weird dead colors. And then, then you get into the Renaissance and they start to really nail the figure and get the, uh, the perspective right. And the sunlight is more realistic and, you know, they're, they're really getting to a point where it's almost almost a photograph, right? And, mm -hmm. and you get sort of into the pre-Raphaelite period where it's getting very realistic and they're just bringing in some subtle stylizations. And, and then the camera is invented. And all of a sudden, painters have to figure out another way to be relevant than just right. capturing scenes. And so, yeah, of course, there still is a continuation of that. But then you start get all this, you know, cubism and surrealism and, and some pretty awesome stuff. But then as you keep going, it starts to kind of settle down into, okay, here's a flat gray canvas and here's some <laughs> splatters and here's, and, and you get even farther. And I remember the last room was like the most current. It was like from that year. And it was these two or three like gigantic pieces of paper, which you can imagine this artist had laid them down on the, floor of their studio and like rolled this melted wax onto it and then like cigarette ax ashes and you know some beer tops and cum and whatever hair uh, <laughs> and some, some scrawled triangles and circles and stuff and that was where all of our history had brought us to it was like uh, uh, and I remember standing there with this kind of what feeling and seeing this family walk in. And they just kind of looked around and walked right through it. I was like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it, art history ended up taking mainstream art to a place where uh, it is only for the insiders and the collectors uh, and the investors and this big money uh, institutional thing. And meanwhile, it's actually visibly garbage, like almost to the point of being comical, right? And uh except for the fact that that's where all the serious money is. And meanwhile, the rest of us are, you know, I mean, we're getting by as artists, making yeah. the best art we can. <laughs> they'll like us in another hundred years or something like that, you know. <laughs> Who's the guy who had the uh, the urinal? That he oh, yeah. With, yeah, oh. the urinal guy, you know. Okay, the well, the thing is, and... <laughs> that, that guy could paint, though. That's Marshall yeah. <laughs> and he was... He was a good, you know, I mean, he was a cubist and he did New Descending a Staircase, a very famous painting. And mm -hmm. no, he yeah. was trying to make a point. And I That's think- That's what it reminded me of, you know, like he just put yeah. the urinal out there to be like, oh, well, <laughs> this is our two vid. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and, and I get it. I think it's that somebody had to do it, right? Um, right. But then, we need to go back to making art that's nice to look at and, you yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> I guess people need to make weird points and stuff, and I'm glad that they can do it through art. Uh, and I'm, I'm not against it because I think all art should be, you know, valid. But uh, you know, when the the great vaulted institutions uh, that tell our culture what art is right now show only that, and there's just yeah. they yeah. have to leave leave that institution. They have to go to the you know, the lowbrow art galleries or the tattoo studios or the, you know, uh, places like that if they want to see anything that's uh, visually incredible. Right. I agree. I definitely agree. I think if you're not, 
if you're not looking at the trying to see the big picture or, or see what everybody's doing, I definitely think, yeah, you're you're missing the boat. Uh, my, I go to Norfolk State, and they're uh, really, really interested in the uh, the tattooing thing. You know, uh, I haven't heard Old Dominion even was too, just for the fact that how they consider us multidiscipline artists. And then most of us haven't even really been to school. You know, we're learning probably more so from our homeboys. You learn from your mentor, you know, like how to do this stuff. And we're coming in, you know, we'll, we'll end up taking these classes and we already understand the color theory. We, are, we may not know the exact, you know, verbiage and everything to say, but like we understand secondary and like the tertiary colors. We understand, you know, the a weak contrast that, you know, and a harder contrast, like we get that. We understand composition and flow and we totally understand it, you know, and we do it. And here we are, a lot of us are dropouts or, you know, we just have a high school education and we're not considered, as my teacher put it, the uh, educated people. But here we are with a skill set that is beyond, you know, guys that, you know, even have their masters in it. You know, it's like these guys are, they're just doing it. But people ignore, they were ignoring us just because of we're tattooers. They weren't looking at the fact that, you know, these guys are putting this art on skin, you know, from black to the, you know, to white to wherever, big, small, tall, they're doing it all. We're doing all these styles. And in the meantime, you know, this kid might be putting a burner on a wall or might be doing a little oil painting, you know, for a lip study or something, you know, like just to practice, you know, but seems how yeah. we're not making a lot of money, you know, <laughs> they don't pay us no mind. I mean, I'm definitely uh, not somebody that needs to be convinced. I, I do believe that tattooers are among some of the most versatile, hardworking, eager to excel artists that I've seen out there. And I think part of it is because there is a certain, like, yeah, you, you can, have a niche career doing deliberately crude tattooing or whatever, but mostly there's a certain you know, extremely high level of, uh, you know, technical perfection and visual, you know, compositional, you know, impact that's, that's expected. Right. And it's mm -hmm. like the, this bar keeps getting raised. Uh, it's on a totally different trajectory from modern art, which is, you know, I, I couldn't actually tell you what drives it, but it, it sometimes feels like a race to the bottom, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, and you finally, every gallery has nothing but a bucket of piss in the corner and, you know, they've won, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> all right. I, I'm going to stop ranting about that. I'd love to hear about some <laughs> black artists. Uh, I know we've got some names that, uh, that you sent Sandy and she's got some things ready to queue up. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, the first one, of course, is uh, <clears throat> I can't talk about black artists and like tattooing because uh, for me, I got into tattooing late. Uh, I was damn near 30 by the time I got into tattooing. Uh, but I found out about these these guys and these are definitely some of the biggest. These are, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest uh, that a lot of people should know if they don't know. And I've heard, of course, it's Jackie Gresham being the first one. Uh, and, you know, she's originally, she's originally from Flint. She's a Midwestern chick. Uh, but she moved down to uh, Louisiana. And she is, as far as what we all know, to be the first African-American, first Black female tattooer. All right. And this is back in 76, uh, uh, you know, when she came down to New Orleans. Her shot, she still tattoos to this day. Uh, that's her shop. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to, to meet her. I, I did a to. guest spot in her shop one time. Oh, you've not met her? Yeah, I, I got to yeah, guest to the shop one time. Yeah. She's incredible. She is incredible. She's a, a very you know uh, confident, you know, bold, beautiful, uh, graceful person. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to to work in her shop for about a week one time. That was oh that's man, awesome. twenty eight years ago. Yeah, that is awesome, you know. Uh, but yeah, she's like, you know, that's like that's like big mama to us, 
you know, she is, she's the one. Um, she's like just a lot of women I know are, have talked to her and like they're inspired by her. You know, they're looking for, you know, that female, that black female artist. Well, like I said, she is, she is definitely one. She is uh, the icon. Yeah. And, you know, and that's amazing to still be tattooing still, you know, after all this time. I mean, 76, that's what, 44 years ago? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throwback picture right there. <laughs> I only just saw her um, just a few days ago, actually, and I thought, oh, my God, she's like got to be one of the most epic humans I've seen. I just like fell in love right away. Yeah. Uh, New Orleans is New Orleans is such a an incredible and unique place. And, uh, you know, she really, you know, embodies what that place is like. You know, she's such an installation in the city there. I think New Orleans is one of the most artistic, artistic, um, I don't want to say it, they're, they're like a, when people think like artsy cities, for some reason, they don't think of like New Orleans in that area. Man, that place is, it's some really creative, uh, artsy stuff going on down there. That's, that place is heavy, you know. The more and more I read about it, like look at and see what came out of there and what's going on down there is like, yeah, that place is, I think it should be a little higher in everybody's conversation for like, you know, just art all across the board, music, you know, uh, visual arts. I mean, even, you know, for Mardi Gras, you know how they, the big chief wears all that stuff and you know, they saw all that stuff by hand and, and it's, it's crazy, you know. I think it's supposed to be Mardi Gras, uh, what, this week, isn't it? Uh, I thought it happened last week, but yeah, it's, it is an incredible place uh, just in terms of, you know, most American cities, you don't feel that very old history under your feet the mm -hmm. way you do there. Uh, it feels almost like a European city in that sense. Yeah. And, you know, of course, New York is, you know, a, clearly an old town, but it's yeah. been paved over so many times, you know what I mean, that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it feels more modern than, than uh that old and historic, although it's got a timelessness to it too. But uh, yeah, right. New Orleans is definitely like this frozen in time kind of like that. There, there's a sense of it that you can imagine pirates walking the streets. <laughs> exactly right. Barrels of rum. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. But uh, my second artist that I also wanted to uh, bring up was uh, Zulu. I've never met Zulu either. Uh, but I remember Zulu <laughs> from a Janet Jackson video, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> back in high school. I didn't know he was a tattoo artist then, but I was remember having the hair and like the, the marks on his face. I was like, yo, who, you know, it just, it just stuck out to me. And then when I got into tattooing, it was like, hey, I remember that guy. I think it's from a Janet Jackson video. But, um, I guess uh, Zulu has been tattooing a really, 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 really long time as well. But, uh, he learned that it was Leo Leo Zulueta. Yeah, yeah, I believe he was his apprentice. Yeah, and uh, that tribal style of uh, tattooing, I remember that being really, really big in the 90s. Yeah. That was, uh, I'm sure you caught that time, right, guy? Oh, yeah. Well, this is all like the, the sort of little tattoo renaissance that happened in the 90s was on the heels of Ed Hardy's Tattoo Time books coming out, which I think really helped to fuel that and sort of, uh, you know, spread these photos around in the hands of, of all these aspiring tattooers and show us what was possible. And so mm -hmm. we saw Leo's stuff in there and it's like, holy shit, this is so different. And it tattoos so well, right? And, yeah. And, uh, and it just caught on like wildfire and then it became everybody's uh, least favorite, like bad <laughs> walk-in tattoo because someone would just want to come in and have a tribal and armband that only went halfway around their arm and you know do five of those in a day it's like oh please you know i want to quit my job but uh <laughs> but then you know that evolved into what you know we have black work today which is just such a vast you know right. spectrum that includes that and and uh and so it, you know it, it ends up having this very particular look 
uh, you know, this that you might associate with the '90s tribal and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see he sort of adapted that and taken it in his own direction. That's got a little bit of a, you know, almost a Victorian element to it, but really reduced. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Leo uh, does with his designs, I, I've collaborated with him a bit uh, in the past, and uh, he uh, he really is very um, limited in the scale of shapes he'll use. He won't use like some large shapes and then some other much smaller shapes. He likes to to like settle on a scale for that design. And uh, it, it creates a very uh, graphic, bold clarity. Uh, and- uh, So it's a science so, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, Zulu's also a crazy accomplished painter too. I see he's spoken uh, at a bunch of universities and everything, but his painting is, uh, his painting's marvelous really good oil painter you know i was not to be surprised by it but i was like man this guy is he's definitely about that art life i found out i guess he went to art school before he even started tattooing you know so i was trying to find some uh some better links for it it's, uh i think zulu also uh links to a lot of other stuff <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely will <laughs> yeah the 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 thing about having an art degree, once upon a time, that that wouldn't necessarily help you get a job in a tattoo shop. Yeah, uh, I definitely have heard the uh, the terms. I remember when I first got into tattooing, I remember hearing the terms that they uh, that they called those gentlemen that had. Right, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. I won't say it, but we all know what it was. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and of course, a lot of that was you know you're not necessarily going to make a better tattoo as a result of having gone through art school. Uh, however, that's kind of changed now because now people are going to art school with the intention of learning as much as they can and becoming a tattoo artist, right? Right. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a much different approach to, to learning, you know, when you have a, a goal in mind. Yeah. Like I said, with me being in school, I will definitely say it has, uh, it actually has helped. Um, not, I'm not going to say I was able to take the information that I was learning, uh, like with color theory, it really helped out a lot. I picked up some stuff from the, from the guys, of course, uh, like Tanae Whitfield, uh, Andy Chambers. Uh, they've told me some Gabe CC. They've told me you know, some things. Even my own mentor, you know, of course, has uh, uh, explained some things to me. But when I went to school, I was able to actually practice it and not on a human body. Like, you know, have the teacher over there telling me, you know what I'm saying? Like, understanding how to, like, just de desaturating colors. Like, to hear somebody say, hey, dip that color in the contrasting color when you're tattooing, that way you might not, you can ease up all some of the black or make a natural shadow. I wasn't really getting that till I went to school and my professor made me paint the color wheel like 40,000 times and have to <laughs> get the damn gradient. It was, it was like, you, and, but after a while it clicked, it was the repetition and me seeing a thing. I realized, oh, I'm one of those type of guys, you know, and it made sense. So it's definitely, it has helped me. I can't say that much. It definitely has helped. I won't, I'll never tell anybody like I used to before <laughs> that going to art school is a waste of time. You know, I used to really, I used to tell people that, you know, but I know back then, you know, I was anti like art establishment. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's different when you're going there with a goal in mind. Hey, your camera's slipping. We can't see any of your beard at all. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a different thing now. I mean, that art, art degree is not going to be held against you if you're getting an apprenticeship but uh back then it was a different story for sure <laughs> yeah i read some of the stories online uh on some of them forums back in the day it was like sheesh okay <laughs> you know but yeah those days are yeah they're definitely coming down now they're they're starting to be in the rear view yeah it's yeah. uh it's it, it, mostly a good thing right yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So when you started going to art museums, uh, did you notice mostly white artists, but you did 
I'm sure find a few black ones where there's some names that stood out to you that I uh, noticed mostly all white artists, all white males too. I, I that yes, was yeah. I was one of the ones who called on. I was like, like were women not allowed to draw or something back then? Like I, I didn't see any I, I didn't see any female artists. I don't think till I went to the Chrysler Museum out here in uh in Norfolk, Virginia, like uh like a few years ago. Like no women. There was all it was plenty of naked women around though, you know, painted and you know, sculpted. It was plenty of women figures and bodies, but it wasn't any women artists, you know, no black art, no, no black artists. Um uh, if it wasn't an like an Asian specific exhibit, I didn't even see like I didn't see anybody pretty much but like you know European like artists. It had to be a specific exhibit for me to see something different yeah. you know and what a message that sends you too right it's like this is yeah, this I didn't is realize it until like later kind of like damn man like i don't know like there's nobody else doing this <laughs> so outside of the art museums uh were there some you know meanwhile in the shadows some important black artists that were uh you know creating you know, their own uh, genres, their own looks. You know, have any uh, any names you could share with us? Oh, definitely, uh, definitely. Um, I don't know how you are. Uh, a lot of these guys, <clears throat> like I caught on to, uh, who actually who I was gonna talk about next, his style instantly grabbed me. I wasn't into, like I said, I wasn't into the whole abstract, like contemporary art thing. But when I seen Maya's work, like the way he pulled that off, it was almost like, I don't know, that was like graffiti abstract art to me. Like it was, it was the, the whole flow and style of his work was just like crazy. It reminded me of uh, Ernie Barnes's work from like Good Times, but like it looked like something somebody would put up on a wall, you know, like New York City somewhere or you know like it just that's what it reminded me of uh his work was by far the most stylized work like that i had seen you know and uh yeah and like it had been a while since i seen something that really just see what i'm saying like this stuff was just just it was just it was it was it was, it was fucking me up i'm sorry it was this <laughs> This, yeah, this snatched me up, like, fat, instantly, like, instant look, and I couldn't, like, not that you try to duplicate it, but, like, you can't even duplicate that, like, that's, like, that's his, like, you just know it when you see it, you know, and he's definitely one, like, that's, like, it's his style is just, just unique, hella unique. You know, instantly eye catching, and yeah, him. He was definitely. He was. Uh, he's definitely was the guy. Then I found his partner Tukey uh, Carter, and he's the same way, but it was different. Like you could tell they were homeboys. You could tell these guys like worked together, and uh, Tukey is just. Uh, but it was different, you know. And like I said, I just I loved him. You know, these guys, and I wasn't a fan. This is what made me start looking more into abstract, like art and contemporary art. It was this stuff. Cause I had never seen it done like that before. You know, I'd seen, of course I've seen the Picassos who I wasn't really a big fan of, which is funny because that's Maya's favorite artist. <laughs> uh, well, interestingly, but, Picasso was actually very influenced by uh, uh, traditional African masks and statues. Exactly. And, uh, and, exactly. I mean, it was a huge, a huge imprint that made on on many of like and the faces and portraits that he did were all mm -hmm. you know, very influenced by that. It yeah. does, doesn't Maya run a gallery? Or I mean, I see him posting yeah. all Peter kinds Street of Station. Like, yeah, yeah, Peter Street Station is a free gallery. I think it's free if I'm not mistaken. Like you can just go in there and like draw. Sometimes he has a uh, like live bands playing music there and stuff. Uh, I've been to it uh, when he was still getting it together. Uh, I haven't been there since it's like been like open, open, and uh, but it's it's great. Yeah, Maya's really doing 
doing a lot of big things. He has a, a artist actually that came out of his uh, camp that I really like. Speaking of styles, and his his name's actually Paper Frank, and uh, he has a very I, it's it's a street style, but like it's it's different too. You know, I I really like styles. You know, styles are you know like like how you you got the organic thing, like the bioorganic thing. It's like I know your work when I see it. Even when somebody copies it, I'll think like I think that's guys, you know. And I look at them like, no, that's not. That's just somebody doing. It. But like you're the first person I think of, you know, because I had never seen that before until I seen your work. You know, I'd seen the other guy, Alex, uh, what is his name? Uh, Alex, uh, Alex Gray. I know he does a lot oh, yeah. of, like, yeah, but I know his work, but your work doesn't look like his work. You know, it's because of your style. And I, I just read them like signatures. Like, this is Paper Frank, you know, and, you know, I, he does That's a lot really of stuff cool. with markers. He'll use paint and stuff like that as well. But the flowers, you know, like, his style is this was Maya's apprentice. You oh know? yeah, this is incredible. Yeah, and, you know, but his style is very. I'm just big on style, and if it's dope, you know, it's dope. And these guys, like, they push that. You know, just a style of work that's just. I relate to that, and it goes back to the street thing. You know, me growing up, I guess that's what it is. You know, it resonates with me with that as well. But I really like these guys' work. Like that's, I don't. That just that's like awesome to me. Yeah. You know. Do you uh, follow an artist who goes by? Uh, I think it's Hobo New Ink. I don't know this person's yes. name. Uh, who is this? They are absolutely incredible. Hobo underscore Hobo, New. Ink. Yeah. Oh yeah, he is. Uh, I just he's just dope. He's a tattooer. He uh he runs the shop. It's called Atlanta Ink. Uh, down there, but yeah, he's a phenomenal painter. Funny thing is, you know, he was on Ink Masters and they booted him. He didn't even make like when they were doing their broad cuts or whatever, they didn't even pick him, they sent him packing. And I was kind of like, wow, like, damn, guys, you know, you really just clip, you know, a hell of an artist for I don't know, I can't remember what challenge it was. I'm not a big Ink Master fan like that, but I do remember him being on there, yeah. They clipped this guy, you know? So the people who watch Ink Master, they missed out on a hell of an artist because I don't know, you know, ratings or something. I, I couldn't tell you, but yeah, this dude is, Atlanta is a hotbed for like, you know, really creative black artists. It's really creative stuff going down there period, but a lot of black artists, man, are, you know, they're, they're coming with the ruckus. <laughs> you know, interestingly, it seems to be happening more in the South. You think that's true? Uh, yes, I definitely believe that's true. I don't know why, but uh, it, I definitely believe it's true. I wouldn't even begin to guess why either. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, yeah, but. Movements happen where they happen, you know? Yeah, uh, that's the best thing about them. Yeah, you know, it's just like all of a sudden, you know, it's a, you know, things just start popping. But yeah, Hobo Inc. is a, uh, dude, is, he's he's crazy. How about outside of tattooing? Any, uh, any names you'd love to share with us? Outside of tattooing, um, let me think. Are you familiar with Alfonso Dunn? The name sounds familiar. I might know his work if I uh, recognize it. If well, I, I love it, this I guy's post because, you know, he, he's an educator. And, um, you know, he's one of those people that every post has something really interesting. And sometimes first it shows the drawing and then you, know, you swipe and then he'll have reduced it down to like a few different block versions with arrows for light sources and stuff and and uh just incredible stuff uh let's see sandy's finding it usually he does pen and ink wow in fact i've never seen him do a watercolor before but uh well yeah uh, okay it's, it's the instagram account is uh you know how some some artists because i've seen him do a lot of animal art too but not on his instagram page right uh, 
it's it's funny you know how some artists try to keep their instagram pages like super consistent his are all these like anatomy studies and eye yeah. and foot and it's all cross hatching and it's just oh, incredible okay. um, i'm a fan of that style of work so and uh, I just, you know, I like any artist that can explain the, the inside mechanics of what they're doing. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll go into several paragraphs just about uh, cast shadows. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, click any of those and then, you know, you, you swipe. And uh, yeah, you gotta, I'm about to get sometimes you get some video. <laughs> I'm about to yeah, follow he's him. <laughs> yeah. And I think he's actually uh, a bit younger than I am. So, uh, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, look at that. See? Yeah. Like, okay. down. I love that stuff. And, you know, in some ways, it reminds me of this artist, Bern Hogarth. I don't know if you've ever seen the Bern yeah. Hogarth dynamic hand. Dynamic sort of wrinkles and shadows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if Don is inspired by Hogarth or not, but his explanations kind of remind me of, of Bern Hogarth a bit. Uh, okay. it's such a heavyweight, you know, uh, any yeah. tech that hasn't seen Fern Hogarth's books and wants to, you know, make their work more dynamic, you know, he's all about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The dynamic, uh, light and shading, you know, that's a good one. If you're wanting to, uh, you know, make your shading more effective. So it's more concentrated. And so when you look at the, at the piece from the distance is a really strong, dark and light rhythm, right. you know, or, some work when you see it from a distance, the shading is all kind of too even throughout the piece. Yeah, it's too smooth. A lot. yeah it's... right, right. Are you a fan of uh, Kehinde Wiley? Who is that? Kehinde Wiley. I have not heard the name. Oh man, yeah, he's the dude. That, matter of fact, he's the guy who did. Um, he did the painting for Obama. For uh, he's always he takes like old paintings. And he'll put black people in them, and uh, they'll be in like you know regular up to date clothes and stuff instead. Um, he's always sneaking like little sperm, like in his paintings and stuff. Like he's a he's a phenomenal painter. I do like him. Keande Wiley is uh is dope. Um, I'm trying to think of the young lady that did Michelle Obama's paintings. Uh, she's really good too. There's a bit of a different right. style. Yeah, I remember looking at her profile right after uh, uh, Michelle Obama's uh, paintings were sort of re revealed, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't remember the name either. But uh, okay, is this uh, Wiley? Yeah, this is Kehinde Wiley, yeah. Uh, Mm, navigation uh yeah, <laughs> yeah be enough. you assume it's going to take you to a bigger pic oh, okay view images here we go oh uh, yeah yeah okay yeah i i have seen this artist absolutely this is just such recognizable these these are huge right they're like yeah he does big, yeah big old ginormous uh paintings I'm always jealous of artists that can do that because, you know, if I do giant paintings, just eventually I've got a closet full of giant paintings. You know? yeah. uh, <laughs> I haven't attempted one anywhere near. I haven't attempted a painting over four feet yet. You know, so I'm still in the, in the little fella stage. <laughs> uh, you know, anything bigger than a back piece is like, I don't know, I think it's hard to not let it be months of work. Right. Yeah, this dude is, uh, this is the guy. Yeah, and, and you can see, you know, he's got like that, I don't know what his training is, but you can see Caravaggio in there. You can see the, the classic, yes. you know, uh, the Renaissance uh, influence. And then he's, you know, taken that in his own direction. And it's always beautiful when people have the, a, a skill set that is so bulletproof that anything they do is just incredible. Yeah. This is, man, 
this is stuff that pumps me though, you know, and inspires me. This is uh, this is definitely it. Oh yeah. Wow. Do you have any favorite graffiti artists? Uh, it's um, <laughs> Mo Two is one of them, but I don't think he really posts a whole lot. Uh, uh, my one of my other favorites is my homeboy, but uh, he's real um, sketch on saying his name, <laughs> so I won't say his name. Um, another one, uh, one of my homeboys I can say actually is uh, even though uh, he's not black, he's Puerto Rican and Jewish, is actually uh, Dave Tevinel is uh, one of my guys, you know. Um, it's so many of them, man. When I can't think of these guys, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I can't believe that. <laughs> but yeah, mode two, not cope. Nah, cope's in trouble, so we don't need to talk about cope. <laughs> so uh, what, what a scene, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. you want you want to be able to show the art and yeah. Uh, some of the guys' names I want to say, but they're not with that, so I like I don't say their <laughs> names. But it's graffiti's weird like that, man. You know that. <laughs> But I guess if you get hit with all them expensive ass fines, you wouldn't want nobody screaming your name out either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Yeah, Dave is uh, nuts. <laughs> yeah, you can see, you know, the comic and the skateboard uh, mm -hmm. influence in there. And of course, tattoo influence. I love how it's just all kind of become this. You know, these are all. Uh, scenes where we're looking for maximal impact right we're, we're trying to punch punch the viewer you know and, and really affect them you know and they're not necessarily going to have a chance to stop and sit down and gaze into the misty depths you know right uh, you know they might be driving by at 70 miles an hour or mm -hmm. you know the tattoo it might be from across the street and uh you know it's always impressive to me when uh something has that much impact uh, not that that's the only kind of art that I like either. I love gazing into the misty depths too. Yeah, yeah. And that was something, like I said, I had to learn from over, like over time, you know, learning to like the other stuff. Like it's okay. I know as a, as young black kids, it's, it's good. It sounds weird, but uh, we're not supposed to like certain shit. Like that's that's really a thing. As crazy as it sounds, you know, it's like nah. They'll say either that's like that's yo that's white people shit, or they'll say that's that's weirdo or or that's soft, you know. Uh, so certain things, you know, for all the, the black kids, if you're out here listening, go like whatever you like, okay? Because trust me, you're gonna get older, and then you're gonna be like, man, you know what? I was being dumb or I was young. I didn't know no better. Like whatever you like, whatever you like, you know, because if you love it, it's going to come out in the wash anyway. And whatever you do, some type of way, you know, it's going to find its way in there. So, dude, just embrace it and just like like it because, you know, uh, for a uh, guy I was going to talk about was like Kurt Bote. Kurt Bote was uh, he's actually the guy who started uh, Dark Skin Body Art. And then he gave it to me after a while. He was in, <laughs> Kurt <laughs> might feel a way about this. He was in like an emo scream band. <laughs> you know? Oh. <laughs> I think it was supposed to be like a rap band. I don't know. It was kind of like pre Lincoln Park, Papa Rope sounding. I don't know, man. It was, you know, uh, it was different. It was very different. Kurt was different. You know, Kurt had, uh, I think he had red plaits in it, dyed red plaits in his head with beads and knockers in them. It was, you know, but you don't get to that without saying F it and being comfortable in your own skin and what you like. You know, Kurt, he does an abstract style of art and tattooing as well. Like, it's different. But if I was a kid, I'd be like, you know, I'd be like, oh, man, I don't know, you know, that I don't know if that's street enough. That might not be... It's like, nah, if it's dope, it's dope. If you like it, you like it. You know what I'm saying? And Kurt is like a testament of that. You know, that's, you know, really good guy. 
you know, is always trying to help people. But yeah, Kirk is definitely, you don't get like Kirk without being uh, comfortable, like I'm saying, in your own skin and liking the stuff that you're, you don't think you're supposed to like because you are, quote unquote, you know, you are black. It's like, nah, you know, like whatever. You know, you like whatever you like. You know, it's only going to help you grow as a person and you'll appreciate the art more because there's so much dope stuff that's out there that you don't know nothing about that you're shutting yourself off to due to some pre preconceived notion or rule that somebody made up that's like not even a rule, you know? So I will say, you know, guys, get out there, you know, just because I'm not a fan of a certain type of work, that doesn't mean you ain't got to like that. Go out and like that stuff, man. You might love it, you know? That might be your thing. Just go out there and love this stuff. Mm. Enjoy it, because art is so, man, it's, art is everything, you know what I'm saying? It's art is, I hate to say art is life, but it really is, you know? And just get out of here and, you know, just enjoy it, love this stuff, you know? Push your style, create your style, man. Because I'm, I'm a style whore, you know? Be all about style, you know? Right on. So, hey, Sandy, do we have any uh, audience feedback that, uh... Uh, or questions for uh, for Brandon? Um, there wasn't any questions uh, yet, um, but everybody's enjoying it. Um, Jason Leeser's in the chat and was saying that uh, earlier on that he uh, also went to college with the intention to become a tattoo artist. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's mostly a lot of hellos. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, hello back. Thanks yeah. everyone for tuning in. Uh, Brandon, is there anything that else? Uh, I mean, that's that's a powerful message. You like what you like, you know. Don't be yeah. afraid of, you know. Uh, you know, it was really no different being a metalhead kid. You know, it's like, oh yeah, that's that's not cool. You know, this yeah, I that. small set of things is cool, and you know, don't look <laughs> elsewhere. Uh, and I think yeah, there's a lot of that. Just is, stay the path, stay true. <laughs> stay a lot of that is just youth, you know, and and uh, you know, it's it's important to not not have to worry too much right and just right. relax like what you like because uh, it stifles your growth man you know you, right. that might not be your you know the way you get down like the way you can create you know you're and you're sitting here trying to you know appeal to these dudes these, you know your other homies you know and that might not be what moves you man you know you might like i don't know hell you might like kittens or something you know, i don't know you know you that might be your thing you know what i'm saying it's well you okay. know people worry people worry about how do i find my own style well you're definitely not going to find it by trying to people please right exactly. and you might exactly. think well i got to do that if people are going to get tattoos from me and yeah sure to a certain extent you got to do what people ask you for but if there's something that genuinely appeals to you uh, you can sneak that into your style. It'll show more and more, and people will recognize, ah, this person is doing this well, and they must really like it, you know. And that mm -hmm. that'll become a thing they ask for more and more. And before you know it, you've got a style that people are asking you for. Exactly. You know, like I said, and the thing, the cool thing is, everybody that we've talked about in this conversation, none of their work looked alike. You know, they all have their own recognizable style of work. You know, but you could see where they got elements from their work from like other places. That's just like kind of just like how it is, you know. But if you keep shutting yourself off, you're yeah, you're right. You're never going to create your style because you're trying to please homeboy over there who's probably not even putting that much value into your shit. You know what I'm saying? He just is. You don't have to be so. You don't have to try hard to be down. You know. Let your let your stuff speak for you, man. You know, even like with the galleries, you know how they don't have galleries not showing women, not showing black people. It's like, well, yo, they're missing out because there's women over there making some really kick ass stuff. You know, I mean, <laughs> and you're not showing it because they're not part of the boys' club. It's like I thought this was supposed to be about you know art, you know, showing the world, you know, and representing and. You know, here you are, you know, and having a sausage fest, quote unquote. You know, it's. Yeah. Well, you know, I, it took this long 
for us to kind of collectively say, well, wait a minute, you know, not only is that, you know, wrong, it's also sort of boring. <laughs> yeah, know? you know what I'm uh, saying? <laughs> You know, it's got all of our enrichment to see everything. You know, I want to see everybody's art. I follow every kind of artist. You know, I mean, the last thing I want to do is only follow biomech artists or only follow tattoo artists. I follow every kind of art, and yeah. and, uh, and you know that that makes it worth picking up my phone every day. I don't want to just see more of the same. I want to have my mind blown. I want to have my envelope expanded. You know, exactly. Yeah, I know my feed is. The people you, if you was a click on even my private account or my dark skin body art account, it's definitely not all tattoos. It's nowhere near all tattooers. I'm following people who make cologne and you know some that kid that can just keep doing flips and not throw up for some reason. You know, I'm I'm looking at all kind of stuff. You know, it's just you know I want to be intrigued. You know, I like to be amazed. You know, I just like to see different stuff. You know, and. I can't just put myself in the little... I'd go nuts looking at tattoos all damn day. I'm not going to lie. I really would. <laughs> you know... I we already do it, right? Tattoos all day. <laughs> you know, I love it, but shit. <laughs> you know? Well, thanks for coming on and sharing a little bit of the broader art world. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be having more events. And, uh, if, you know, you've joined us in the past and, uh, you know, definitely going to be inviting you on again in the future. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate it. I love doing I love this. This is this is cool. You know, I'm all about this. Right on. Well, you have a great day and thanks everyone for tuning in.